Yeah, you better watch oh, where you're going for a while because you won't be able to see. Now it's a little bit uh, dark here, but in the room we'll have some more light. Yeah, it's really dark. Now we are 64 meters below the surface, more than one of the nine. Century, they could be very heavy, like 400, 500 kilos, even 2,000 kilos, two times. So we're going to talk about the past, because that's the most important and interesting part of the, of the trip here. Uh, as you can see, we are in a modern, let's say, modern land place. Uh, in some places, you can see very new wood, like here. This passage was uh, renovated four years ago. So in some places, you can see wood which is like four years old, four months old, but in some places you can see timber which is even 300 years old. Lots of timber everywhere. We can imagine miners down this tunnel looking for rock salt and for safety they strengthen the walls and roofs with wood. Wood is the best material in a salt mine preserved by salt. Right? Metals corrode very quickly. So we have wood everywhere in the whole mine about one million cubic meters of timber. So did they use the tunnel roof to shoot on all the money Smoking, of course, is not allowed. Uh, we're going to spend here about two hours, so that's <laughs> two hours the great opportunity not to smoke for smokers <laughs> and cleanse their lungs. You probably don't smoke anyway. Bad news taking photos, filming costs tens water extra. And again, one of them, we can see how trans salt was transported from level to level. The rope going down. Let's imagine they attached this rock salt to the rope on a lower level. And it was brought onto this one. Somebody had to turn around the winch, which we'll see over there. Yeah? Let's have a look. The rope going under the roof. around the winch like this and in this way one in this way one end of the rope was lowered down the shaft and the other came out at the same time with 400 500 kilos of rock so they are like a wind this group uh, yeah, so and people operated such winches but they brought in the 16th century they started bringing horses to the mine yeah so they <laughs> there were horses at some point, there were even 60 horses working and we can say living in this mine. The animals stay in the mine until they yes, die? Yes, they did. No, they didn't. <laughs> Actually, they stayed here all the time till they were still strong enough to work here. And then they were brought back to the surface. And then the miners looked after them. 
That's my version. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. Why do you have doors here? What is it? What's the purpose of all the doors? Yeah, the lots of doors on the way. Some are a little bit heavy, so let's be careful. Let's pass them from hand to hand. They must be here. They regulate the flow of air through the mine, part of the ventilation system. When they dug those tunnels looking for rock salt, and they dug them through rocks like mudstone, sandstone, loam, and others, looking for rock salt, those tunnels were first very narrow and very stuffy. There was not enough air there, so they called them furnaces. We can imagine why those two guys building those tunnels. And look, those tunnels, those galleries are everywhere. How many kilometers or miles of those tunnels were dug here? About 300 kilometers, which is well over 200 miles. Dug through the, the here underground to, to, to in search of rock salt. Once they found the salt, it's just a continuous pile of salt. There's not seams. Well, that's the problem because it, it's like this. The salt, the salt deposit is from the sea water, right? There was the sea evaporated about 13, 13 and a half million years ago. And first layers of rock salt remained. Layers of rock salt filled up, covered with other rocks. But then Carpathian mountains started pushing them and folding them and breaking them into pieces as well. Those pieces were lifted towards the surface. So that's why there are, this deposit has two different parts. The lower part, folded layers of rock salt. The shallower part, pieces of rock salt. And we are in that shallower par part of the deposit. So imagine a big cake with raisins in it. And the raisins are the pieces of rock salt. The rest of the cake, mudstone, sandstone and others, right? So again, the tunnels were dug through the cake in search of raisins. They found one, a piece of rock, a lump of salt, they got inside and they hollowed it out. So when we enter the next room, another raisin on the way, you will see <laughs> rock salt around you and there's just a skin of the raisin, a protective shell of rock salt. Then we'll continue walk along the next gallery, another raisin. Huh? Great analogy. Good analogy. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. But it is rock salt. So in those walls there are also some other so impurities like loam, clay, sandstone and others, right? Uh, the the darker the lower quality yeah but anyway even though those walls are so dark if you lick them you will see they are really salty yeah you're asking me how many years I've been working here a long time but I've never ever licked them. <laughs> but I don't have to tourists <laughs> Confirm this is rock salt, yeah? So I think this passage is becoming wider and wider. Tequila. Tequila. The smell, uh, that's the smell of rock salt, and it's very healthy. Actually, the salt here helps us to breathe better. We even have a kind of rehabilitation or treatment center in the mine for people suffering from asthma allergies, right? Mm -hmm. So breathe deeply mm -hmm. when you to those. So to this, look, it says in Nicolas Copernicus, the astronomer, the Polish astronomer, 1473, that's when he was born, 500 years later, they put the statue here, because he visited, the mine belongs to the most interesting tourist, let's say, although there was no tourist yet in the mine yet in the 15th century. Uh, but <laughs> the first one was opened not uh, quite early because uh, at the end of, of the 18th century they started preparing the first regular tourist route. At the end of the 18th century, this place attracted more and more visitors. I think he saw them uh, quite like this. Why did they wait? Because at first the not so big pieces were transported out and there was not such a big uh, production of coming out. Yeah? How did they build horses? How did they bring horses to the mine? They put them into wooden boxes and that's how they lowered them down into the mine. Or they put white belts around, like slings around the horse's belly and yeah, that's how it traveled. And miners, there were ladders for miners to walk down. Imagine walking down over 60 meters. Yeah, there were ladders for the miners, quite steep, and uh, of course without electricity. Yeah, two miners sat in them. They were lowered, and now there are miners, and that's how they traveled uh, on the on the road to the mine. They called it the and lovers.
legs to climb up, which was another reason for the accidents here.
another sunny day, another hot day. Um, so we are going again for sightseeing of the beautiful place. Uh, and uh, so today we're going to start the day with a visit uh, to the uh, old Jewish quarter, uh, Kazimierz. I'll show you the main square of uh, of the Jewish of the Jewish quarter, and then uh, then we're going to drive uh, across the river to the area which is called uh, Podkuje, and uh, we're going to see uh, the site of the wartime uh, Jewish uh, Jewish ghetto and uh, we're gonna go inside uh, the mm, Schindler's uh, factory so we're gonna see the Schindler's factory today uh, probably we're gonna spend about like one hour and a half at the factory and uh, it's a quite interesting museum and uh, since kind of a uh, museum have quite small rooms so we're gonna have the same mm, situation like on the first day when we were visiting uh, uh, the castle the state rooms we're gonna split into two groups and uh, one of the groups will be taken around the museum by a, a, a local museum guide and the second group uh, I will take care of I will take care of it and uh, so we're gonna see the Schindler's factory we're gonna have maybe uh, like probably around noon a little break uh, near the factory there are a couple of places where we can uh, get some some light light lunch and then we will uh, continue We'll continue. We're gonna go and uh, see the site of Plash of uh, concentration camp. Uh, so the, those of you who traveled last night to see uh, the salt mine, you already kind of we've seen the monument. We passed it by, but today we're gonna stop next to it, and then uh, we're gonna complete a kind of the driving part of our tour with uh, going to uh, Nova Huta. It's uh, the district. Uh, east of Krakow, about six miles from the city center, uh, an industrial area, then a, an ideal communist city, which was built near Krakow uh, straight after the war, but now this is just a, a part of Krakow. And then probably around two o'clock, uh, we're gonna return back to the mm, city center and to the market square. So I'll show you the market square again, like now this time in, in daylight. I'll take you to the St. Mary's Church to show you the St. Mary's Church. And if someone would like to, since uh, we haven't been to the uh, cathedral on the first day, if you would like to, I can uh, take uh, those of you who wish to, to go to the uh, Royal Cathedral up on the Castle Hill, just to see the cathedral inside. And then we're going to have a, uh, a free time. Uh, and uh, at night, uh, we're going to meet probably around 6 o'clock. Uh, uh, for a crack of uh, farewell dinner. We are going again to uh, Kazimierz and our dinner will be in Kazimierz and uh, it's scheduled for uh, 6.30 so if you know there are no any uh, changes. So this is our uh, schedule for, for today. So and um, we are now uh, leaving uh, the area of the old town. We are going to uh, the place which is called uh, Kazimierz. Uh, which is in Krakow mostly known as uh, the uh, Jewish quarter. When someone tells you in Krakow I'm going to uh, Kazimierz, usually people mean the uh, Jewish quarter. But uh, in fact, uh, Kazimierz has two parts, Jewish and Christian. We're going to be in the Jewish section of it. And the name Kazimierz, it's a bit difficult to pronounce if you're a non-Polish uh, uh, speaker, uh, it's uh, the name of a Polish king, Casimir the Great. This is the only Polish king whose nickname is uh, whose nickname is uh, whose nickname is uh, the Great. Uh, it's like.